on tonight's panel. Grant Shapps, the government's transport secretary, former minister and chairman of the Conservative Party under David Cameron. A Labour MP for nearly 10 years, former shadow secretary for energy and climate change, Lisa Nandy. Rupert Reid, Professor of Philosophy at East Anglia University, former Green Party candidate and now spokesperson for climate change campaigners Extinction Rebellion. Journalist and breakfast host on talk radio, Julia Hartley Brewer. And businessman and guest dragon on the BBC's Dragon's Den, Theo Fafitis. Welcome very much to our panel, to our audience here, and of course to you at home. Join in the conversation. You can argue along in the usual way, hashtag BBCQT, on Facebook, on Instagram and on Twitter. We'd like to hear what you've got to say. So let's hear our first question tonight, which is from Sally Knight. Should climate change activists be applauded or arrested? <laughs> Lisa. Um, well... I really support what's happened in the last few weeks, and I don't say that lightly, but the reason I say it is because I've been a Member of Parliament now for nearly 10 years, and over that time I've seen how this is an issue, the most important issue of our time, that is always kicked into the long grass, because there's always something that is supposedly more important, always something that is supposedly more pressing. And I think without those young people going out on climate strike, without the protests that we've seen in the streets, this issue just quite simply would not be on the agenda. But what really matters now is what happens next, because there's a chance now to build a really broad coalition that will keep that pressure up. Why do we need to keep the pressure up? Because we're not even on track to meet our net zero target by 2050. The reason for that is actually Grant's department, Transport, where we're actually going backwards in terms of emissions, not forwards. And I suppose the only thing I would say to, to the protesters, many of whom I really admire so far, is that you've got to take people with you on this journey. There is no point in telling people in towns like Wigan to get out of their cars when our trains and our buses have been brought to a standstill for the last two years. This has got to be a positive agenda about creating the clean energy jobs in towns like mine, jobs that were lost when the mines closed many years ago, about warmer homes, about better futures for our young people and about a better environment. And if we make common cause with people who are trying to... To, to improve the daily lives of ordinary people in this country. I think this is a battle that will win, will start to take action, and will build a better Britain in the process. Theo, how's your view? Well, I think the argument is undeniable, although I think there's a bloke across the pond that is denying it's ever happening. But we'll put him to one side for the moment, because he's not very important here tonight. Um, but the reality is, the argument is undeniable. The method is ridiculous. Because I've just come back from my company conference, two days, I had 500 colleagues there, and I've got to tell you, climate change was the number one question we had for discussion at that conference. We've got so many things for our business. Everybody's tuned in on the environment, sustainability, climate change, and what our business is doing. And in fact, they even voted that now we should plant every, this year a tree for every colleague we hire. And we already have. That's over 4,000 trees for this year. And they're saying they'd rather have that spent out of our bonus pot. That's how important it is. So we don't need people to get super glue, stick it on somebody else's butt and hang around there for two days, stopping them going to work, stopping them going to the hospital, stopping them going through their normal, everyday lives where they work to put food on the table for their children, a roof over their head and to lead a normal life. That just is not acceptable. <laughs> Sally, what's your view? Can you ask the question? I think it's really interesting, um, Lisa, that you use the word protester, because I deliberately worded the question mm -hmm. activist. Right. Um, which is suggesting that I support, absolutely support the cause. Yeah. And it's absolutely right that this is highlighted um, and that the governments worldwide take notice. But I agree with Theo that the methods I really don't applaud at all. And, and I think for normal people just trying to get to work, do the right thing, um, it really is deplorable. And, and I just think there are better ways to grab headlines. So, Rupert, what do you think when you hear that? Because you, you want to take people with you. Well, I think the first thing to say is, if there are better methods, 
honestly, I'm all ears. Because I've been in this game for a long time. I've been working in non-governmental organisations, in the Green Party for many years, knocking on doors, etc. And you know what? None of it worked, right? Early on this year, we're still on the same trajectory to disaster as we have been for the past 20 years. But then what happens? In April, we had Extinction Rebellion and the first glimmer of starting to change. We managed to push the issue up the agenda when a thousand of us brave souls, and it's because of them, you know, it's because of those 2,000 people now of, of ours who've You're been arrested. You're deluded. Excuse me, let me just finish this point, it's key. It's because of those 2,000 people that have been arrested, yeah, that I have the privilege of being here on this panel this evening at all, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't be here, yeah? But look, what I do want to acknowledge is this. There's a reason why the story hasn't worked until recently. And the reason is that the problem feels too remote. So yeah, after April, a lot more people said, we agree, climate change is an emergency. But it still feels too remote to people. It doesn't feel like an emergency. So you know, those of you who are there thinking, well, but is it really quite as bad as they're saying? I get where you're coming from. I understand that. I tried for 20 years in the old methods and the old story, and it doesn't work. So here's my message this evening. We're changing up. We're changing up in terms of our methods, Nonviolent civil disobedience, the same thing that succeeded for the suffragettes, for Martin Luther King, for Gandhi, and many others besides. And we're changing up with the message. So um, my message to you tonight is, forget about 2050. Forget about rising sea levels. Forget about polar bears and penguins, precious and beautiful though they are. This is about us now. This is about the fact that last summer, the crops in this country were failing as they were baked in the fields. This is about the vulnerability of our food supply. This is not even about our children or our grandchildren anymore. This is about the intense vulnerability of our whole society to this catastrophe that is already descending on us. That's why we're at London City Airport today showing some of that vulnerability. That's why we need to be out there until that message gets through and starts to really, really change. OK, let's hear a little bit from the audience here. <laughs> Obviously, we all know that the environment is a huge issue. Um, I myself follow a plant-based diet because of it. Um, but it's interesting that you talk about the methods. Um, for me, a load of people dancing in the street, probably, you know, off their head and, you know, no. dreadlocks, well, yeah. soap dodgers. Well, you, you may be maligning I mean, a whole group of people, though, I just like Yeah, no but I, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, well, I think it's the wrong type of people who are putting out this message. There is a real... Uh, you know, argument for the environment, and it's completely painting the wrong picture. And as Theo said, it's stopping people going to work. It's causing normal people problems, and it shouldn't be. It should be a problem that we all adopt and we all um, change our, our regular lifestyles for. Um, and I think, it, you know, when you see these people dancing in the street, it's not a protest. It's just a field day. And I think it's really important that we make this a proper issue and not make it look stupid. Now, Rupert, I know you want to come back in, and I'll let you. I'm just going to get round yours a little bit. Yes, you in the front. You wanted to say something. I do worry about some of the younger people who are seeing this and thinking it's an appropriate thing for them to do, potentially then getting criminal records and then potentially harming their future employment prospects by having a criminal record, which then means certain job opportunities aren't available to them. Man in the glasses. Um, one individual called Greta Thunberg, um, we, we know, we understand her. She's actually garnered a lot of support as an individual around the world, and, and whether you like her attitude or not, she's actually done that. Whereas what we have now is our activists in London who are actually alienating people against them. I think they're starting to destroy the argument and they need to be very careful. The woman in the yellow sweater here. Um, I was uh, going to reference a George Monbiot uh, article a few days ago where he spoke about the need to perhaps refer to this as an extermination event rather than an extinction event because that's too passive and I wonder what the panel thought of that. And do you, and do you support the, the action that's being taken by Extinction Rebellion? Um, I do, I do, yes. With a big sign. I do, <laughs> yes. So I think it's sad that they're being arrested rather than applauded. I think that's a waste of police time. Um. <laughs> come back to me, just let me hear a little bit from the rest of the panel. Uh, Julia. Um, 
Uh, look, I, I, absolutely, I think we should be tackling environmental issues, moving towards be renewable fuels, uh, cleaning up our waste and our oceans, and looking after our planet. But there is nothing in any of the science, nothing in any of the IPCC report, reports that suggests we are heading towards a catastrophe, a crisis, mass extermination, or anything of the sort. This is scaremongering of the worst kind. Well, the UN um, says we have 12 years to limit global it, temperature no, rise to 1.5 degrees, and urgent, it, unprecedented changes are needed. Well, no, what it says is if, if we do actually uh, want to try and prevent uh, 1.5 degrees we have a two, uh, there's a, a two-thirds chance that we can do that if we do address those issues but there's no necess it's not necessarily a catastrophe that results if we don't do that the, the, the earth has been warmer than that but the key thing is what we have to do in order to achieve that what extinction rebellion are doing and what they want which is very very different from what uh, has been discussed by other climate activists over the years is the net zero global uh, I mean, of, of uh, carbon emissions by 2025 is achievable not by getting rid of diesel cars or or perhaps people having a bit of an extra tax on their flights to Mallorca on holiday we are talking about getting rid of all cars all buses all trains, all central heating, all flights, uh, having a state rationing of meat, this is what it will actually involve. It's impossible to achieve that target otherwise. This is about taking us back to a pre-industrial age. Now, uh, we're told constantly this is a terrible thing. Industrialization has been a terrible thing. Industrialization, the Industrial Revolution, is the greatest thing that's ever happened to mankind. It has delivered longer, healthier, happier, more fulfilling lives for billions more people than anything else that has ever been achieved by our planet. The best time to be alive is right now, apart from tomorrow. Whatever the issues are regarding climate change, they will be solved by technological innovation, by the markets, by governments, yes, getting together, and by a sensible debate based on the facts. What we've got with Extinction Rebellion, I'm afraid, is not a sensible debate based on science or the facts. It is, to all intents and purposes, a, a sort of a quasi-religious death cult. And I, for one, think it's absolutely insane that people are listening to their absurd demands. <laughs> Would you like to respond to that? Quasi-religious death cult? Well, look, I apologise to the young man for not having a nose ring, and I apologise for not being part of, of any cult. I, in fact, I take a lot of my prompting from the United Nations, from the IPCC, who repeatedly say in their most recent report to limit global overheat to 1.5 degrees, which is considered the threshold for danger. We need rapid, far-reaching and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society. And why we're back is to say, where's the action? Where's yeah. the action towards that goal? Today, those... Those famous eco-extremists, the International Monetary Fund, said this. <laughs> the risk of catastrophic and irreversible disaster is rising, implying potentially infinite costs of unmitigated climate change, including human extinction. Mm. Now, if that's not a license for the kind of thing that we're saying and doing, I'm not sure what is. It's Greta Thunberg was science. mentioned. I had the privilege of knowing Greta Thunberg, and I asked her in public when she was here in April to support our first rebellion, What's your, view of Greta, uh, what's your view of Extinction Rebellion, Greta? And her reply was very simple. She said, I support it wholeheartedly. And you know what? At the end of the day, this isn't about whether or not you feel sort of warm towards Extinction Rebellion. We, we don't really matter, right? What matters is if we succeed in drawing attention to the issue and if we succeed in managing to start to get at last the action we need to stop ourselves driving ourselves over a cliff that's what it's about. But Rupert, don't you understand? You're acting like numpties. You're turning people away from the great cause that we all believe in. We're talking about it now. I've just explained the cause. And actually, I'm getting a decent amount of applause here, so I kind of think we're doing all right. Still <laughs> numpties. Yeah. Grant, you're sitting here very quietly. <laughs> well, as, as, as Lisa uh, rightly pointed out when she was asked the question at first, my department, the, the uh, transport department, actually is responsible for a lot of the, the CO2. Here's the thing that's not in doubt. We have to get a grip of this. I have no doubt about it at all. 27% of the CO2 comes from uh, transport, and 90% of that is from vehicles. And there's some really easy things that we can do, which has moved, for example, towards electric cars, electrification of, of the roads, uh, and that would be a very big first move. I've got an electric car, it's fantastic. These are, these are practical steps we can take. But here's the thing I don't understand, Rupert. 
we are living in the country, the industrialized nation that's done more to move further and faster to decarbonize than any other country in the world that's legislated to get to net zero. So rather than stopping people from getting to work and stopping people from meeting their hospital appointments, go to a country which isn't doing any of these things and protest there. Oh, I just totally agree what you just said there, absolutely spot on. And instead of um, making it difficult for other people, why don't you protest like peacefully and protest outside the embassies where they're not doing anything at all? Okay. The woman in the red sweater here. Yes, you. Um, I was in London today and at Charing Cross and there was a, a whole line of people with like lead type makeup and wearing green and red, walking silently through the station. And I made the presumption they were Extinction Rebellion because they were all in the, the Trafalgar yeah, Square. They were, yeah. I do applaud the sentiment behind it. However, it is alienating a lot of people. Yeah. And for me personally, I do think that there is a climate problem. I do think we all need to do something. Yeah. However, it, for me, the person that's made the most impact on me is Sir David Attenborough mm. in The Blue Planet, when he said quite majestically, respectfully, the amount of plastic that's in the ocean and, and that the, the whales and the other creatures are swallowing. And for me, that made a huge impact and it made me think we all need to get together, all of us, to do something small to and, make an and impact. And did it make you change your behaviour out of interest? Yes, it did. It made me take things seriously because for him to go on record to say that and the way he goes about saying it mm. it made me pay attention and my nephew is six and he watches the blue planet and i know that it will make an impact on him and he is the future for us <laughs> so I, I find it really incredible that uh, grant you can sit there and say let's look at other countries let's take some accountability here in the uk lisa i think what you said about public transport in northern areas is so true. And what I'd like to see is some accountability from the government around private car ownership and taxing something that we know is incredibly dangerous and investing that money into public transport, specifically in northern regions where, you know, systematically London's overfunded and then northern regions are left where private car ownership is a necessity. I will admit, the woman in the yellow um, I was held up by the Extinction Rebellion um, protesters earlier today and I was late picking my son up from school as a result and he was in floods of tears, desperately upset because I wasn't there when he expected me to be. But in 20 years' time, he's not going to remember that. What he will remember is if we fail to act now on this emergency. We can cope with a bit of disruption now if it, it has the effect of us actually taking action. A bit of disruption is nothing. Uh, week. I mean, the plan is that this this campaign will go on for the next two. Do you, do you anticipate it lasting the full fortnight? And then and then what happens after that? Well, whether it lasts a full fortnight, that depends on how many of the audience come and join me after tonight and uh, and uh, take the to the barricades. Look, the, in terms of the things that have just been said, a couple of key points to respond to: the net zero target that the government has legislated for. Great. That wouldn't have happened without us. That was outside of the window of political possibility before the April Rebellion came along. And our rebellion changed the figures, changed the figures completely in terms of how important people thought the issues were. It's, it's, this is fact. This is just straight fact. Look at the polls before and after the rebellion. After the rebellion, people suddenly start saying the environment is a more important issue than immigration, more important than the economy. The first time that's ever happened in this country. That's down to us. Now, in terms of the figures you gave us, Grant, about how well this country is doing. You know, the first demand of Extinction Rebellion is tell the truth. And I just so wish that you would start telling the which, truth. Which figures? I wish, which, I wish which, which the figures, figures where you claim that we're doing better than all the other countries, right? That those We've decarbonised faster than any other no, no, G20. The, those figures are only... The gas emissions and greenhouse gases have come down faster yeah, than other G, only any other you, G7 since Only if you exclude from those figures all the figures for air travel and sea travel and for all the products Which that we buy from China and India. Which internationally are the same category and, for every country. No, so that, no, doesn't, no, but change no, that no, doesn't change it for our country because it's an international Excuse figure. Excuse me, that does change it because actually we fly a lot more in this country than people do in other countries. In the States? No, not in the States than in Europe. So when you get the figures 
is right. When you tell the truth, we're not doing well at all. Our carbon emissions have barely come down since 1990. Those are the facts. It's and I just so true. wish, it is true, that is the truth. I'm, I, I've written on this. I, I so wish you would look into it. Absolutely. And I so wish you would start telling the, the truth. Here. Now, in terms of the thing about other countries and saying, oh, why don't you go and protest in China, whatever, our rebellion is, wo is worldwide, right? What we started here is being exported all over the world, a great British export. It's completely peaceful, completely non-violent, and as the lady so rightly said, it's disruptive. But you want to see real disruption? Crop failures, right? Children not knowing whether they're going to have a future at all. No, but this, That's this, the this, real I'm sorry, this is absolute nonsense. This is Malthus on crack cocaine. This, this is the stuff that's been predicted. This, this sort of nihilistic, the world is going to end the stuff. IPCC is, is what has been and going, the IMF. The IPCC is not predicting any of that. There is nothing in the science, nothing in the documents, nothing in any of the IPCC reports that is predicting any of that. What this is, the way, the tactics you're using, and, you, and, and again, you don't have aims in Extinction Rebellion, you have what you call demands. And those demands, are, you're trying to push through by bullying. You've got the option to stand at the ballot box. You have the cheek talk about the suffragettes and the civil rights movement in the United States. Women didn't have the vote and neither did black people in America. That's why they had to resort uh, to that sort of action. You have the ballot box. Last time round, well, the European elections under PR, where Green Party isn't, uh, isn't actually uh, affected by the first-past-the-post system, got 11.8% um, of the vote. That's a massive increase on the last general election, 1.6%. Uh, so it does show you can persuade, but if you want to persuade people at the ballot box, you want to have the argument, Julia, then you I, can do it. I do, but, but I do stand... I do stand at the ballot box, and I say to you, as someone people, elected three finish, times, to you bully are wrong people, about this. To bully people you through are protest and wrong. disruption is just, that's what it is, it's just bullying. No, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not bullying to point out to people that this actually is a, a, an international crisis that has to be taken much more seriously. It's no good for Grant to sit here and say, look, look at all the brilliant things that we're doing, when his government is the one that slashed investment in solar, that effectively <laughs> banned new wind farms, that subsidised diesel, which is the dirtiest fuel of all. And your and party is Opposed to fracking, slashing, which is one of the cleanest energy funding. forms. <coughs> Your slashing, party is opposed slashing, to fracking. On, slashing, fracking would bring down our carbon emissions. Funding. You're opposed to it. Uh, well, we're in favour of giving people a right to decide, which no, strikes me as, as frankly democratic if you're going to have fracking imposed on your area. But look, let me say this to you as well. This isn't just about the environment, as mm. absolutely critical as that is. This is about um, Mark Carney, the Governor of the Bank of England, saying very, very clearly that climate change and our failure to tackle it is um, the biggest threat to the global financial system. This is people's pensions, this is people's life savings, this is people's livelihoods. And if you don't care about no, the future of, of the planet, I which do. you clearly no, but that's don't, our, but this is it. Whenever you, if have you won't debate, accept the evidence about that, no, no, no. at least but accept I that there are people in this room and people listening at home who stand yeah. to lose an awful lot if you carry on pretending this that this there is not go. real. This is it, you see. And this is... a sensible debate about the science and about the facts and what the economic and political costs are of different, various different forms of action to tackle the issue. We just sort of shout, well, you just don't care about the children if you don't agree with me. And that's not a sensible political You're grown ignoring up the debate. science. You're I'm not ignoring, ignoring the science. science at all. Can Final word, and I get okay. move on. Gentleman over here said we should move faster on cars, uh, which, by the way, we had already said we'd end the sale of petrol and diesel cars by 2040, before any of the Extinction Rebellion action. Last week I talked about investigating bringing that forward to 2035. Gentleman over here talks about Northern Rail, and we're putting a huge multi-billion <laughs> package into building a lot more We've Northern Rail. I don't, think this should be, I don't think this should be a political uh, issue in as much as across Parliament we've agreed to vote for this, but Lisa, I have to pick you up on your solar claim, because 99% of all the solar capacity in this country has been built since this government was in power. So your fact is simply wrong. Be and Rupert, sorry, just to finish off, you want us to be fact-based. We are following the facts of the Committee on Climate Change. The line who are with actually, statistics. Oh, Absolutely. So, now you don't, Absolutely. so the Committee on Climate Change are now the ones who are wrong The about Committee it. on Climate Change are telling you that you're actually way, way off the pace and that your efforts on Absolutely. adaptation look like your dad's army. In other words, so, you're So when we have a country, for that's example... The that's, that's what they say about So when you. we have a country that, for example, last year, and you won't let these facts out for some reason, Last year, low-carbon production of energy made up over 
of our entire production as a nation. If I listened to you, I believe we were getting nowhere, whereas, in fact, this economy is decarbonising. As I said before, rather than disrupting people's lives here, go and protest in the countries where the carbon actually needs to be cut at a much faster rate, Take where they don't have any plan in place. Do it starts okay. at home.